Hey, what's up everyone? Maury Croson here from the Performance Lab in California and we're going to do another breakdown here today on Peyton Manning. I thought this was a great recommendation to do a comparison of Peyton Manning before he had the uh, neck surgery compared to the after the neck surgery and what was kind of, you know, some of the big differences between his throwing motion before and uh, his throwing motion after. So uh, we'll start with, with the before, which is... Uh, up here, obviously, when he's, he was when he was on the Colts, um, big thing I'd say is that he was able to get a lot more spine action before than he was as the the later end of his career started to to transpire. So, um, and he also had better shoulder range of motion. So, one of the reasons, or one of the ways that I, I check shoulder range of motion is when you transition from this kind of loading phase. And I know that I mean this is 2004 here, um, and so. The, the cold stuff and so the the video quality is not as good but as you can see when he transfers his when he begins to, to rotate transfers weight forward um you could just look at the angle in his spine and you can see that that before uh he had just a lot a lot healthier spine angle he didn't end up going into uh, a lot of hyper extension and he ended up actually bending forward in his spine a good amount with the ball uh, still in his hand and we're going to go back and we'll end up going back and forth a little bit here but notice um the the post Peyton Manning where as he's going here notice how much extension he gets in the spine when he still has the the ball in his hand and how um you know what, what that essentially does is that that's a an indicator that the shoulder range of motion wasn't as good he probably started getting limitation because of the um limitation within the a segment of the joints uh, or maybe even having those joints going getting compressed together that's obvious that's a uh, a big red flag for uh, a lack of, of shoulder range of motion so i know when i'm treating uh, neck problems or shoulder problems that that a lot of times we'll end up um looking at the opposite one so if there's a shoulder range of motion issue looking to see what's going on at the neck because those have direct correlation so um, and then because of that because he has to end up getting this extension here he doesn't really get to have very much overall spine motion in the actual throw and so as he's he's coming across here you can see really all he gets in the throw is just this kind of last little kind of uh gouge forward with the mid back um, but he's mostly throwing with it with his arm and he's mostly uh, bringing all of his weight forward right he's bringing all his weight towards the target there uh, in, in the spine which is a little bit different than what he used to do which is uh, this is a pretty similar throw here so we can see that he's going he's loading and as he transfers forward and as he throws notice that look at that spine movement right there see how he can bend over the spine and really get all the way up onto that that front leg and really finish all the way through there and he almost kind of bends off to the side uh as, as he ends up coming through which i think ends up being a big difference between you know how he was throwing before compared to how he's throwing now we have another uh we could probably get another angle here of him throwing all right here here's the one where we could see from behind what it looks like where he, when he's coming through how he ends up kind of coming through and also being able to bend a little bit more to the side uh, as he's coming through uh, the the actual throw, so he comes back and notice that one he doesn't get into as much extension within that lumbar spine. He's still in a little bit of extension here, uh, but then as he comes through, he also ends up kind of rotating all the way through and being able to kind of bend over to the side there. Uh, he gets full elbow movement all the way um, all the way back, uh, and then we, again we can compare that to the old uh, way that he th or sorry the new way that he threw. Um, where he's going into that lumbar extension and ends up bending forward. He doesn't get near as much of that elbow all the way through as he's throwing. And he's much more, again, coming right towards um, the target. So I think what ended up really getting getting limited between the before Peyton Manning and the after Peyton Manning was, uh, one, a little limitation of shoulder range of motion, and then the other one was a limitation of um, spine rotation, especially within, like, the, the mid to, um, you know, kind of the – upper lower spine i guess you know mostly mid spine didn't get as much rotation both of those end up being very very common with when you have compression within the neck when you have problems there then you end up losing again that shoulder range of motion like i talked about as well as the ability to rotate the spine so and those are both both very very important parts of uh being able to, to throw the ball far as having good mobility within that t-spine as, as well as also having um obviously good shoulder range of motion so 
Um, those are definitely two two very important parts of the training that we, we do within the, the quarterback online program. Uh, a lot of exercises that we focus on there are going to be getting more range of motion in that thoracic spine and, and also extension within that thoracic spine as well as overall range of motion within the shoulder and then improving um, just general strength within the shoulder. And, and those those four things I think are crucial in order to maximize your overall potential as a quarterback. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and you can click the link below and you can check out more about that that online throw program. Also check out the free ebook, The Blueprint to the Perfect Throw, um, packed with information about how you can throw better as a quarterback, what are the key mechanics that you need to do. It's not necessarily showing you um, you know, a, a certain way that you, a certain mold that you have to fit into, just showing you overall what are some key aspects of the throw that, that you should be able to uh, understand some key concepts that you should probably uh, have in your throw in order to, to maximize your, again, overall potential, overall performance. So check those out. As always, guys, we thank you so much for watching these videos, and we will see you soon.